Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Spark Technical Prototype Showcase. Now, before we get into actually showing what we have, I want to go and explain to you what we are even going to show you and also explain a little bit what the plan is for today. So first, we have the explanation. Then we're going to do the showcase. At that point, what we're going to do is chat you and us. We're going to sit down and we're going to come up with an ability that we will implement into the game. Then Chris is going to work on implementing the ability. And the point of that is we want to uh, showcase how easy it can be to actually implement stuff uh, using our technical prototype. Then we're going to have a little bit of a Q&A while that's going on. And then at the end of the stream, Chris is hopefully going to screen share us the newly implemented ability. So that's the plan for today. Now, before we get into it, I want to go ahead and make clear what a technical prototype even is. You've heard me call this the alpha, but honestly, calling it an alpha is, is even a little bit generous, right? Um, this is a technical prototype, and uh, here is why we're showing it. Spark is not just a game. We're not just creating a game. What we're creating is a game and a modding platform. But, and unlike most other games that are a game and a modding platform, we are not creating the game first. What we're creating first is the modding platform. So if you think to something like Dota 2, Dota 2 exists as the game Dota 2, and then it has the arcade where you can create custom games. And the arcade is given certain tools that are you know, made available for the custom game creators. Um, but that's kind of independent from the main game mode. It's more like, here's the main game, and then we'll make you some tools. What we're doing is different. What we're doing is we're creating the tools first. We are first creating the custom game engine. And then instead of creating the game separately from the custom game engine, the main game of Spark being Spark um, will actually be created in the custom game engine in the modding platform. So something you have heard us say a lot is that um, Spark is technically the first Spark mod. It isn't uh, just a game that is separate from all of the other custom games. Instead, what we want to do is we want everybody to have the same tools available as we have while making the game. So anytime we create something, we will give it to you. Now, because of that, we have been over the past few months prioritizing building this modding platform. That is what we have been working on. That is what this a technical prototype is. So, so far, we do have some aspects of, um, of the game already done. I know that Chives has been working on some abilities for heroes, has been implementing certain items, but none of that is actually in the build that we're going to show you today. Instead, the, game, uh, the build that we're going to show you today is just there to show you how easily we can actually create things, because what we worked on is a baseline. So since we've been working so much on creating the baseline, so much working, uh, working so much on creating the tools for custom games, um, we will now going forward have a really easy time implementing custom games, or in this case, actually implementing Spark. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much how we went about it. And the important thing here is that the most difficult part is done at this stage. We have a lot of things working. Um, and uh, I personally think it's really exciting. Now, we are going to show you the game now, but I want you to be, again, aware of the fact that what we're showing you is a technical prototype. It is not um, an actual fully finished game or anything even close. <clears throat> Did I miss anything? Uh -huh. if, if I might chime in just to stress yes? the exact point that we are at with this technical prototype, um, we haven't even configured the camera to be at the right angle or height <laughs> because it's simply not our concern. Um, yeah. So this is like truly not a game. It is an engine demo. Yes. Um, so let's go ahead and show that engine demo. No, even though we keep saying it's not a game, um, it is actually uh, a game in, in the way that we made as the engine demo. Um, it's Patch Boys. So uh, we'll now show you our really super pre-alpha version of Patch Wars. All right, so let me go ahead and start it up. Now, sadly, I can't show you starting the thing, but it's really just clicking the button. But I'm not gonna go ahead and switch this over to the other screen really quick. And, uh, ooh, all right, now this is where it gets scary. Everybody ready? Oh, God. Chad, are you ready? 
Are you ready? Let's do it. So here is our game. It did not crash. <laughs> it did not crash. And it appears I forgot to disable the alert box. So <laughs> you can see this right here is our game. We've got a hero. It walks around. We, in fact, got two heroes. Look at that. There's another one. We can select this other hero and it also walks around. Um, you can see there are torches, right? Um, they have shadows. Well, actually, they, I guess, give shadows. They create shadows, right? There's a day and night cycle. There's a score limit. Um, all of these factors already exist. Uh, you can see we have uh, abilities. You can actually cast an ability. It's a hook. Look at that. Um, we can go ahead and actually use this hook and shoot this. And we got him. Hey! We hit the first official pod hook. I did it, Chad. Are you proud of me? I didn't miss it. <laughs> it's actually surprisingly difficult to hit. <laughs> so... Um, as you can see, it, it does work perfectly fine. It is a full game. You can see I used mana. If I hit this guy, actually, I, I, I missed the second punch. <laughs> <laughs> I am so sorry, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we hit the second one. If I hit the guy, he takes one damage. <laughs> You can attack him. You can see when we attack, we deal damage and has a damage pop up. Um, we use mana when we attack things and also we have abilities that we can level up. So now we have um, ability lore and this doesn't seem to have a name, but now we have this ability leveled up. If we go ahead and hit him here, then we get another skill point. We can level up another ability even more. Um, the interface currently looks a lot like Dota. Don't worry about that. That will change a lot, right? This is all very much just work in progress, right? Because again, we've been working so much on getting this engine ready. Now, this is um, the game. And I know this is not pretty, but isn't this exciting? It has a shop. It has multiple upgrade levels that you can go through in the shop. You can actually go here and, in theory, buy stuff. Um, not right now, but the possibility exists. You've got uh, the score limit up there. You've got the time you can limit. Buy stuff from that shop. Really? Which one yeah, do I buy? the shop. Look at the shop and buy something. Most of them just like give stats and that's about it. Okay, where where do I I am in the shop right now? Um Oh I I I'm I'm I select the shop zone, then open the shop. I I don't know where this shop zone is. I'm sorry. Chris. It's a little high ground thingy. Oh I think it just broke for some reason. Yeah, well, it, it hey, does it make be a the demo noise. if everything didn't break. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. What we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and just shut this down really quick and then restart it because it worked a second ago. Also gets to show off the day and night cycle again. All right, but we go into our shop and now we can say, okay, cool. Hey, we bought an item. Look at that. Look at that. We bought an item. So that's, um, yeah, that's, that's what we have right now. Um, this, what is exciting about this, okay? So let me go ahead and stress why we want to show this. We think this is super cool. Why is this super cool? Because the most difficult part of any project, whenever you're working on anything, is always to, f uh, to get to the point where you are just implementing stuff, right? You always have to lay baselines and create everything ahead of time and make sure that everything has a place to go. We are now at the point where we can actually just start implementing. We can actually put things in. We can go ahead and put in new models for heroes. We can go ahead and put in textures. We can go ahead and create the map. All of these things exist and are now possible. Now, of course, and here's one of the other really cool things, but this is something that you wouldn't see just by looking at it. A lot of this operates on a Lua level, right? On a Lua layer on top of like the base code. So Chris, I think you can probably talk more about that. Yeah, well, all of the items and abilities that you see here are entirely implemented in Lua. Not just that, but like base stats are implemented in Lua as well. Like the concept of strength and agility and those things are all implemented in Lua because we hard-coded pretty much nothing into the core C++ system. And instead, we made this really great system called Variable Manager, which I wrote a blog post about. If you want to catch a lot more details on it, go to the Spark blog. Yes. Um, and it just kind of lets us... It lets us just do really nutty interconnected numbers between like anything. And it allows us to do stuff like 
implement stats entirely in Lua and stuff like that. Which also means that as a modder, you can change anything about stats entirely in Lua. <laughs> you want me to kill him? <laughs> Chad wants me to kill this. All right, let me get a kill. Oh no, I missed! <laughs> <laughs> I am missing too many hooks here. <laughs> uh, the hitbox on the hook is actually tiny. <laughs> yeah, the particle effect is bigger than the hook hit hitbox. That's why it's a little yes, bit hard yes. to hit. But, but I still shouldn't be missing these. <laughs> okay. Um, yes, uh, there's a blog post up about the variable manager on the Spark website sparkmopa.net you just go there uh, we just posted it last night if you want more detail about all of this stuff then uh just go ahead right go ahead have a look there and we will uh and you, and you can read up more about it so what we're going to do now is we're gonna go ahead and come up with an ability let's go ahead and see what we've got so chat what kind of ability would you like now we're completely open to anything you want to see Right now, we want something that is probably a little bit simpler, not because we can only implement simple things, but because then it's going to take a little bit shorter and we don't want to spend too much time on this. So I see Thanos snap, 50% like activate and then half the units on the map die. You think we can do that? Um, I have to remember if there's a function for getting all the units on the map. <laughs> but if there is, then yes. All right. Do remember? I think there's one in Game Manager. All right. Uh, go ahead. Have yeah, a look at that. I think so. Yeah. I think we use one for the unit. The whole okay. Unit. So kill 50% of the units on the field. Yeah. But then we would also need to kind of put some more units on the field. Just so That's true. I can just spawn a bunch more units at the start instead. Perfect. You guys happy with that? You guys want to do Thanos snap? 50% of uh, fifty percent of the units on the map die at random. That sound good? All right. Chris, we good? We want to do that? Yeah, that seems fun. All right, then. Um, let's figure out how to get all the units. <laughs> Perfect. Then you guys go ahead and figure that out. And in the meantime, if you guys have any questions, if you guys... Wanna uh, if you, if you guys wanna know anything about the game, I'm glad to share things right right now. I'm happy to share things. Um, you saw that the game does already have some sound effects. We've got a very talented um sound effects dude with Killian. All right, like he's been around for a little bit. Um, he's been uh, working on the sound effects already. Um, he has. He has made some cool stuff. Let me actually go ahead and dig up uh, just a little bit of this because, like, there's one sound effect I personally absolutely love, which is the dual sound effect. Let me go ahead and dig that up really quick. Um, so when a duel would start this right here. Isn't that great? Isn't that just... Ah, so... So exciting. I love that one. All right, in case um, you are familiar with Disasters Online, Killian actually made the sound effects for that too. Right, but I think the dual sound effect is ah uh, that makes you excited, right? That makes you look forward to it. We've got a, a respawn sound effect, but by the way, these are still also all work in progress, right? But quick little respawn, come back into the fight. Um, we've got uh, what is this capture point? Oh, you captured a capture point. Will you look at that? All right, isn't that cool? So. That is, um, yeah, uh, we have uh, been working on, of course, a lot of the, the art for the game as well. So to show you, um, I can show the trees, right? That should be totally fine. So we probably, <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. So we've got ourselves <laughs> some little trees that we've been working on. Look at the trees. Aren't they nice? Um, right. This will soon be implemented into the game. There's also... Uh, a bunch of just general um, progress in terms of like, um, where is it? Here we go. Like some ideas for what the spawn could look like. So this would be maybe a possibility, something like that. Or we could have, you know, some some sort of gateway like this. Right. General idea, of course, is to... Uh, the general idea, of course, is to kind of like have some nice... Uh, big gate where the units walk through as they respawn, I think that's what we're going for. Uh, we're of course also working on general textures, so this right here is something that um, will texture the map. I know right now the map is um, still a little bit bland, but you know, this we're gonna add some color in, this is definitely something that's being worked on already. 
here are some more ideas for gates right uh and uh yeah and some more plants right this right here is more of a concept art for something but general environments i think um are something that are important and you can see this is the general style we're going for so like a very mystical type thing where like there's a lot of magic even in just very natural uh, elements and uh all of that so yeah do we have any more questions can we help you out with any more what is the price of the game when it reaches early access and release well uh release will be um so on release the game will be fully free to play right entirely free to play you can just play it what platforms will be will it be on it will be on pc and on steam we have already looked into signing up for steam um I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say we're like a 99% on Steam right now. I'm not going to give it 100% because you never know, right? Something might pop up. Um, but we are aiming to be on Steam. Um, but yeah. Uh, how much of Dota will you use? Like, will you use a turn ratio? Oh, well, that's actually something that's pretty difficult um, to, to like quantify right i think uh, i i like to pull from a lot of things from different games not just from dota but from league from heroes um i like to learn from the people that have already made mistakes um so that we don't have to make them again but for example tur turn rate i believe is something that's good i think that makes it so like uh, makes it feel like your movement has weight to it it makes it feel like any time you go anywhere you're making a commitment which is good so uh will we have a turn rate Yes, will we use heroes from Dota? We will use heroes that are similar to Dota. Not only heroes that are similar to Dota, but generally um, heroes that, that will be, um, you know, like generally um, heroes that will get, how do I best say this, that are inspired by Dota and also heroes that are inspired by other games and also heroes that are, you know, a little bit more unique to us, right? It's really something where I think it's important that everybody feels like there's something that they're familiar with and also everybody feels like there's something new to explore. Then, um, and please put in a camera rock like in League of Legends so my friends won't play it. Oh, we are hoping to implement as many different layouts for people from different games as possible. So I know that League has the camera lock feature, which some people like to use. I also know that League has the map on the other side. You know, the map is by default on the right. Um, these are all things that I want to make available for everybody, right? We want to make it so that you can select which side of the um, map which side of the game you want to put your map on. If we get around to it, a feature that I would really like to have, of course, this is really a matter of can we do it, um, but a feature I would like to have is basically like a game language op option where I'm not talking about like English or German or French. What I'm talking about is, um, you know, like because certain terms use different words in League than they do in Dota, but in the end, they are the same thing. Um so we could maybe even have something where you say, like, okay, I want things to be called the way they are in League. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And now, you know, like ability power is called ability power um, and all of that stuff. But yeah. Are you planning to make the unit shadows be a part of vision factor? No, no, I don't think so. We want, that would be uh, highly complex. That's going to be crazy. Will we be able to create our own ranked modes and own heroes using the tools? Absolutely. That's one of the big things. If we look at Dota right now, if we look at custom games and Dota as they are, um, we one of the big problems we have with Open Angel Arena is that there is no matchmaking. We wish there was matchmaking so it was easier to find groups of an appropriate skill level. Um, if we, feel, we believe that would have helped us a lot. So that's something that we want to make available. Um, again, we are building a custom game engine first and then the game on top of that. So that means that we truly want to make everything available to you, the custom game creator, that is available to us. And that includes things like matchmaking. So that is uh, the general idea. Will you have uphill mischance? You see, that's one of those things that we won't have. We will have uphill. So if we look at, again, Dota League, Heroes of the Storm, and Dota's the only game of those that actually has uphill, right? Um, I'm not sure if League actually has uphill. No, I don't believe it. Does it? I don't know if the base is uphill. Um, but we will have uphill and downhill. I think that's a really interesting mechanic. I think that's something that's really cool, but we will not have an uphill miss chance because I just don't think that's necessary. In a game that's as fast-paced as ours, we want to make sure that those kind of minor RNG factors aren't too overwhelming. 
So yeah, of course, if you want to have uphill mischance, and if you want to go ahead and just make spark uphill, you want to make spark, but it has uphill mischance, then you go right ahead. Because again, the tools are available for you. Or to you. So, um, just for everybody that wasn't here earlier, I think we can go ahead and open up um, the... Ooh, place a funny sound effect every time you open it. But we're gonna go ahead and showcase the thing again really, really quick. So you can see we can run around here. Um, we've got our good old Bard. Um, and uh, just kind of like having another quick look. All right, so this is what it... Uh, it, what it looks like right now, um, of course, as I already mentioned, we are working on textures and having more models and all of that stuff. You know, we actually do have another hero that is almost done in terms of model and animation. Um, I think it's going to be the first hero that is fully done. I'm really excited to show him off, um, but can't quite do that yet. I, I wish I could. I, I know it seems like I'm just being a tease right now, but but we can't quite do it yet. But I promise you we will as soon as we get around to it. I can show you um I can show you some artwork for it if you guys are interested in that. Let me go ahead and dig that up really quick. That is not a problem. So oh, there we go. Oh uh wait one second. Here we go. Let me go ahead and just dig up some quick artwork. There we go. So this is our Astro Mansa, as we call him. Uh, this is probably going to be the first hero that has the full 3D finished model with animations and all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm quite excited for that as well. Uh, he is definitely a big boy. He's definitely a big boy. When will the alpha be available? Oh, that is something that um, yeah, that's a that's a hard call. Honestly, uh, we are hoping to get it out as quickly as possible. I think at this stage, one of the main factors stopping us from actually having some sort of playable version ready is really having the three D models, having the um, you know like lots of textures, making it actually look a little bit prettier. Um, now, on that note, I do actually want to go ahead and give out a warning. So we already have been saying, you know, we want, um, we were, we're going to have like an alpha that is going to be an actual alpha. And what we mean with that is when we release the alpha, there's a good chance that we're going to have a total of two different models in the game. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a there's a very good chance that that will happen <laughs> and at that point where we have a total of two different models in the game one for the creeps and one for all heroes um at that point we're probably gonna already pull in our alpha testers to go ahead and start playtesting stuff because it will be an actual alpha you gotta keep in mind you know i feel like a lot of companies these days you know they've been abusing the term alpha and beta very much so um well we are uh, you know we're kind of going back to the roots of that uh, simply because you know we're a smaller company we're trying to do our best um but there's still a lot to do but yeah <sighs> they all spawn exactly inside of each other because there's no proper unit collision. <laughs> like when i enabled spawning multiple units all right let's see if the ability works Okay, one second. Got to go ahead and answer that really quick. So, how is the alpha beta going to be available? Will it be a paid thing or is it going to be openly available? So, we already have some... Um, we already made uh, some alpha keys and beta keys available. We've been giving some of them away on social media. Um, they are currently also available for purchase. That is also a thing. Um, you know, it's, it's just something that helps us keep going. Again, we are a small company. And we're just kind of like trying to make things happen on our own without having a big publisher, which is really actually great for us if we can pull it off, because that means we're independent and we can actually do lots of cool stuff, you know, that maybe a publisher wouldn't be too happy with, like going for a much, um, you know, much more customer friendly monetization model on these kind of things. Um, but we are going to have, uh, we have some of them already available uh, on the Thinking Bottle store. Um, and then also going in the future, there will definitely be ways to acquire keys uh, through different means. Like there are probably going to be a bunch of giveaways. Um, maybe we'll have something on the website where you can win some. 
We'll see. We'll see. Uh, there are some people that got an alpha key by participating in the September major. And as I have already stressed before, um, those keys are still totally valid, right? Like we promised everybody that plays in the tournament um, will get an alpha key and they will still get an alpha key, right? Will there be multiple? Oh, so snaps done, Is way. it already done? Yeah. Awesome. All right. Let's. System let's... is awesome. All right. I made it so it's a 50% chance of them dying instead of 50% of them dying. Um, just because it was slightly simpler and All right. they're not that different. <laughs> <laughs> Thanos would disagree. Well, um, <laughs> let's, ju let's jump into a call really quick because uh, Chris is going to have to screen share this over. Um, if we were to build a new version of the game with the Thanos snap in, we could do that, but it would take like probably an hour or so. So we want to... Um, Go ahead and just, you know, be a little bit quicker than that. Yeah, it's also highly possible that if you just grab this Lua file and this text file, that it would just work. Because I'm pretty sure that even the release engine loads those files dynamically at runtime. But anyway, let's hop into a call. All right, let's go ahead and go into cool really quick. Oh, there we go. And let me go ahead and add in Chives. There's Chives. Poor Chives, we don't want to abandon him, of course. All right, now I abandoned myself somehow. <laughs> Cool. So now Chris is going to go ahead and screen share us what he's been uh, working on. And then we're going to fan snap some people. And uh, then you got to see what we've been working on. So I, I hope you guys are also as excited about this as, as we are. Will you provide a Linux version? I think we want to, but that's a matter of resources, yeah. isn't it? Um, so the, the gaming engine that we're building all this on top of, which is Amazon's Lumberyard, um, it's fully cross-platform. We have mm. builds already working in OS X. The Linux build shouldn't be much more complicated. Our dedicated server is going to be running in Linux, uh, largely just to save money because Linux instances are way cheaper. Um, so Linux should definitely be supported. The, the thing about Linux and Mac and stuff is that they might not be instantly supported out of the box. Like those might be some months after release that we wrap up the last of those bugs or something like that. All right, there, there you got it. All right. So. We've got ourselves our screen share. One second, I'm going to jump over. Here it is. We even got the code open in the background. So maybe you can show that off a little bit. Um, yeah. Um, also, I'm in the dev version, so I have a console. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to snap um, some people. So uh, here's my Thanos snap ability. You can see it's full implementation over on the left right there. It's just a quick little 20 lines of code. And uh, when I activate it, my game crashes. Oh. Yep, my game crashes. All right. Interesting. Perfect. I tested it like 80 times beforehand. Well, at least I can just relaunch it and then it'll work. All right, there you go. That's how quick it is. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. Let's spread these guys back. Hey, it, it, you know, Thanos would be happy about this. Thanos would fully yeah, he just, embrace it. He's the mad crash. that I did it percentage chance instead of percentage of population. What the heck? <laughs> I wonder if it has something to do with screen sharing. I wonder if it has something to do with screen sharing. Um, Let me try launching it in the tools and see what happens. All right. Well, it would have been it would have been too easy if it just worked. Game also has a fifty percent chance of crashing. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, don't worry about it. We'll figure this out really quick. Again, yeah, keep keep in mind this is all still very much you know an alpha. An alpha will crash. These are the facts. That's the life. But that's not a problem. And we're gonna go ahead and fix that up really quick. And uh, it might actually have something to do with screen sharing. His computer might not be able to handle it fully. Um, it also could be the unit killing itself within a ability that it's casting. Like abilities might not be able to kill their units yet. We've never tested that. Hmm. So I think it also could have just been a 50-50 coin flip a bunch of times in a row. All right, then let's go ahead and have another look at this. Yeah, it totally worked that time. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. Um, also, for what it's worth, here are the Lumberyard tools. Cool, cool, cool. So we're going to go ahead and uh, spread them out again. And uh, this time around, we've got the final snap ready. And snap him up. All of you die. <laughs> Only one die. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, well, that was... Uh, Thanos will not nope. be happy with that. Nope. That, two of them. Two of them. Not just one this time. Oh, three. three. One, two, three. There we go. Now that is that is balanced right there. We're working all the way up. If the next one is four, then, then that's going to be nice. I haven't gotten a four yet. That would be pretty impressive. Let's see if we can get one. Nope. Not ah, three. free. Oh, Thanos <laughs> would be happy with the free. So the important <laughs> thing is, though, as you saw, 
uh, over the course of the past, what, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, we fully implemented Thanos Snap. No problem, it works in the game, and um, it, that's how easy it is to mod this thing. And that's really what it's about. If we have a quick look at the code, you can see it's it's really, it's 20 lines. It's hardly anything. Right. Yeah, and all of this part should be cleaned up because this is all using APIs that we haven't like made pleasant yet. So they're kind of using our raw engine APIs. So you're never going to have to do these weird bus broadcast things when you're actually using the polished API. We're going to extract all those things away. So it's nice, clean, guessable API names. Oh, that's the wrong button. Here we go. Yeah, that's great. So um, again, if you want to learn more about that, go on sparkmobile.net. We just released a blog on the variable manager. Um, just click on blog and it will take you right there. And uh, that's where we are. So I think unless anybody has any more questions, that's pretty much it for, from us. Or do we want to, do you, do you have anything else you want to want to bring up? Um, I don't think so. Unless anybody has any technical questions while we're all here and I'm yeah, around. Something I've seen a lot is people asking for minimum PC requirements. Can we already talk about that or is that too early? Uh, it's definitely way, way, way too early because the thing about the PC specs is that they're going to be as minimal as we can possibly support early on. And then we're going to be optimizing things and making it so we can support much lower specs. So I'd say at release, don't expect to be able to play it on a wooden PC. Um, you know, we're going to be trying to get the game out and spending less time on optimizations and then once the game's like playable and y'all are in there then then we're gonna get to optimizing and all that kind of stuff cool awesome well matchmaking be cross os yes definitely um we're gonna be using a bunch of amazon systems for managing matchmaking and server pools and identity and all that stuff they have a bunch of really really cool services to make all that stuff pretty effortless so if you have any more more questions about all of the um i guess anything really join our discord like I know we keep saying to join our Discord, but seriously, join our Discord. We hang out in the Discord all the time. We answer pretty much any questions that are thrown at us. Right? We just opened up a new channel specifically for custom game creation, you know, like custom game development um, questions and all of that stuff. So we'll definitely, you know, like if you have more questions, that's a great place to go. <clears throat> How should we shuffle any more of the tools like the particle editor or something uh, if you want to sure I'm, I'm sure people will be happy to to see some something else uh, other than my face on the screen so let me go ahead and uh, move over really quick so Chris is going to be showing off a little bit more of the tools right now and uh, here's the particle editor this right here is actually what the particle of those fireballs look like. <laughs> but when you're editing particles, they look pretty different. Um, but it has a lot of the crazy settings you expect in a particle editor. It's got like the emitter particles, all kinds of crazy settings that just kind of cascade downwards for messing with all kinds of things. You can do proper collision with them and everything. You can do GPU and uh, uh, CPU particles alike. Yeah, um, yeah. we get a lot of stuff like this for free because we're using Lumberyard. And um, also these little tools, are they themselves their own executables? So even if we don't ship the full-on tools because it's kind of overkill, we'll be able, oops, we'll be able to ship the smaller components like the particle editor very easily. Time of day editor, look at that. You want to control what sunset looks like? Here you go, boys. <laughs> Every setting you could ever imagine. <laughs> yeah, so Lumberyard is not the most common engine. Um, but it's something that I think works out well for us, you know, and fulfills all the yeah. criteria we need. Um, it can be a little bit more complicated to use than something like Unity at times, um, but it also has strong advantages that make up for it. Um, yep. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So if you have any further questions, feel free to join our Discord. We'll gladly answer them there. Um, just on the chance anybody's out there watching, looking to invest significant <laughs> amounts of money, please reach out to us. Ideally to adam at thinkingbottle.com. You can also reach out to pretty much anybody at thinkingbottle.com. Please do not reach out to anybody at thinkingbottle.com. That's not a real email, but like bow me at thinkingbottle, chris at thinkingbottle.com. Right, any, of, any of us um, will be great. You can just go to the Thinking Bottle website, refill out the contact form there. But yeah, um, anyway, that's pretty much it from us so i hope you guys enjoyed this show showcase um and uh well, i mean we are just really excited for everything and what do you guys feel about playing around of oa now kind of like as a little act of hey 
you know. That's a little act of hey OA is really fun. Yes. Yes. Let's let's go ahead. Let, <laughs> let's 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 do a little act of OA is really fun. And um yeah, so anyway, that's that and uh I hope to see you guys around.